When you understand how your gauges work, you'll understand what's wrong when they don't work. Now, the gauges in our classic British cars fall into two general categories. We have mechanical gauges, such as this oil gauge, and we have electric gauges, such as this fuel gauge. Now, mechanical gauges are just that. They work with no electricity. The mechanical gauge that you're most likely to see in your classic British car is the oil pressure gauge. Now, for a typical gauge like this, for example, there will be one of the oil galleries on the engine will have a line connected to it so that when there's pressure there, the pressure will travel up through the line and go to the gauge. On the back of the gauge right here is a point where the line is threaded on and inside it responds and the gauge reads it. Now what happens inside there? Well, we've got a gauge here. This is a large gauge which comes from the shop next door to me here. And I've taken it apart, but notice on the back, here's the fitting where the line would go in, where the air would go in or the oil pressure would go in. And we have this arch-shaped tube which is sealed at the end. When the tube receives pressure internally, it tries to expand or tries to straighten out, if you will. When it does, it makes a motion like this. Now watch what happens on this side. As I try to move the tube, that's how the gauge operates. So pressure goes in, this tries to straighten out, and the gauge reads. This oil pressure gauge from a classic British car does exactly the same thing. There's an arch-shaped tube inside here. When pressure goes in, it opens, and that's how we get this little needle here to move and give us a reading. Now, these gauges rarely fail, but if you have a question about whether one is functioning or not, you can remove it from the dashboard, take and apply a little bit of compressed air right here where the oil would normally go in, and watch and see what the gauge does. If she reads the oil, she's fine. If she doesn't, she's not. It's that simple. As an aside, most of the time, if one of these gauges reads zero, these simple basic mechanical gauges, if it reads zero, most of the time the problem isn't the gauge. Most of the time the problem is the line connecting here going to the motor, or even the motor itself having no oil pressure. Now something a little different is this combination gauge. This was used in a lot of these classic British cars. This one has a temperature gauge at the bottom and an oil pressure gauge at the top. The oil pressure gauge at the top works exactly as we've already learned. Inside there's that tube which is arch shaped and she's going to straighten out and move the arm. On the back here, this is the point where the oil pressure line is connected to it and that's how she works. The bottom is temperature and it's interesting that inside it works the same way. But we're trying to measure temperature here, not pressure. How do we get temperature from the motor to show up as pressure inside this gauge to move this arm? Well, remember the oil side has a fitting on it where a line is connected. For the temperature side, there's what's referred to as a capillary tube. It's sealed. It's part of the gauge when it comes from the factory. You can't get in there. And if you follow this capillary tube all the way to the end, you'll find it has what's referred to as a little bulb right here. This bulb is filled with something like either ether or alcohol. It's in, sealed into the engine with a nut holding it right into the cooling system. So as the water or the coolant passes by and it gets warmer, this bulb gets warmer. As it gets warmer, the product inside expands and creates pressure. The pressure travels through the line into the back of the gauge and the temperature gauge begins to move. As the temperature gets higher, this expands more, pressure increases, and the gauge reads more. And that's how these combination gauges work. Now in our next video, we're going to discuss how electric gauges work.